uh, I can only repeat it, uh, that I think that, um, you see, just automatic forgiveness uh, when it comes to black people being harmed or killed or injured by people who classify themselves as white. We don't hear people who are white if they have, uh, feel they have sustained some injury or harm from a black person. We don't hear them saying, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. And I was saying in a talk uh, recently, uh, no one asked the white females who lined up and were accusing Bill Cosby of having sexually or date raped them. And no white person would say to them, one or more, or all of them, uh, a long time has passed. Don't you think it's time for you to forgive Mr. Cosby? Nobody would ever think of that. Do you see, no would anybody think to ask a Semite of the Jewish religion, uh, well, have you forgiven the German people? Have you forgiven the Nazis for what they did? Do you, do you see, nobody would even think of saying that. So I think that it is a part of um, black people's tradition from tradition from the time of enslavement. Do you see where the slave master could beat the black person? And I could just envision the black person being beaten and the slave master or the slave mistress would be saying, say that you forgive me. Do you see? And then giving them another lash. Say that you forgive me. And so the black person doesn't have a choice but to say, I forgive, Master. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Um, and I don't want to show any disrespect to the mother of Mr. Walker. I mean, I certainly understand uh, what has happened to black people and where that pattern comes in. But when we were in formal slavery, uh, I heard a white female explain to a young black man, uh, this was at a race relations institute a number of years ago, and the young black man in a small group discussion, he said, I don't believe in racism, I'm a Christian. And an older white female said to him, son, we, meaning we white people, gave you that tradition. We gave you that religion. And we emphasized three things. Slave, obey your master. Turn the other cheek. And you will get your reward in heaven. And so that is the yoke that black people, uh, I say by and large, are still under. Uh, and most black people are not thinking about uh, or understanding that we are in a total system structure of racism. Well, see, you could not, you can't run an oppressive state or uh, plantation or a prison and have the inmates become angry at, at the jailer. So you, if possible, you engage in the psychological warfare of teaching them a philosophy of forgiveness. Now, the prisoner or the slave on the plantation hasn't, hasn't been let free. The prisoner in the prison hasn't been said, we forgive you, and so your sentence is terminated. No one is speaking to the prisoner or the slave on the plantation in that way. But the plantation is run by beating, well, first and foremost, I would say, and uh, maybe somebody will be offended, I would hope not, that when you give the enslaved Africans, an image of God that is the same image of the slave master and say that you must behave yourself so that 
this image of God, which is the same image as a slave master, so that God will love you and admit you into heaven. You must forgive the slave master. Now, that was the position that black people were in for hundreds of years during the years of formal enslavement. And what could they do about it when they were beaten and killed at whim? You see, and so that's when these ideas were implanted, and we must begin to step back and view them more objectively and understand that this is an aspect of the maintenance of oppression. And those black people who are admonishing black people that they should forgive, I would say that those people have been harmed by having their self-respect as black people annihilated, whether they're conscious of it or whether they are subconscious. And if we as black people decide that we are going to respect ourselves, and this is one of the things that has happened to black people in the 500 years of our oppression, including the phase of slavery, formal slavery, is that black self-respect has been completely annihilated. And so, you know, we say, okay, I forgive, I forgive, and then we take the pain and frustration out on each other. It's just like in South Africa, truth and reconciliation. So the people who brutalize black people are allowed to go unpunished. But the pain that is inside of black people goes out towards one another. And the system of racism, white supremacy, continues. So I am making the recommendation for black people's mental health that black people take the position that all of the all of these things that we are dealing with the killing of black men every week every other day the incarceration of black men the unjust sentencing uh gentrification the removal of black people from urban centers across this country that all of this is the face of racism white supremacy and black people have to take the position. We're not going to be in the position of saying we forgive. No, what we're going to insist upon is, number one, that racism, white supremacy as a total system structure be recognized. And number two, when that system has been brought to an end and replaced with a system of justice, then the consideration of forgiveness, if that, that won't even be in order because the system of injustice will have been removed and a system of justice established. Now, that's my position as a black psychiatrist, and I would say that I'm certainly recommending that as important for black people's mental health in this system that the foundation of the position is that we are going to have respect for ourselves second to none. And instead of denying and making apologies for the system of racism, white supremacy, that we are going to hold people who classify themselves as white because the only reason for the white classification is to take advantage of the established and structured system of racism, white supremacy, and that we are going to hold people who classify themselves as white responsible. We're not going to spend any time hating white people, but we are going to hold every person who classifies him or herself as white responsible for changing the system. If they want to take a position that they're not racist, well, then stop the people who classify themselves as white, who are. Don't come and join black people. 
take the John Brown position and stop the people who are engaging in the practice of racism, white supremacy. And, you know, that's not just calling somebody nigger or the N-word if you want to play euphemisms. But, no, the system of racism, as stated by Neely Fuller, functions in all areas of people activity. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. The oppression of black people has deep historical roots and it's perpetrated by various societal, political, and economic factors. Here are some key reasons why black people continue to face oppression. Historical legacy of slavery, the transatlantic slave trade, forcibly brought millions of Africans to the Americas as slaves, where they were subjected to brutal exploitation dehumanization and violence. The legacy of slavery has left lasting scars on black communities, shaping their social economic status and experiences of oppression. Institutionalized racism. Systemic or institutionalized racism refers to the ways in which policies, practices, and structures within society perpetuate racial inequality. This includes disparities in areas such as education, employment, housing, healthcare, and the criminal justice system. Discriminatory laws and practices such as Jim Crow laws and redlining have historically limited the opportunities and resources available to black people. Structural inequalities Black communities often face structural inequalities that perpetuate cycles of poverty and marginalization. This includes inadequate access to quality education, healthcare, and economic opportunities, as well as over policy and disproportionate rate of incarceration, white supremacy, and racial prejudice. White supremacy, the belief in the inherent superiority of white people, continues to influence societal attitudes and systems, leading to racial prejudice and discrimination against black people. Stereotypes and biases contribute to negative perception of black individuals, leading to disparities in treatment and opportunities. Cultural stereotypes and misrepresentation. Media portrayals and cultural stereotypes often perpetrate negative images of black people, reinforcing harmful stereotypes and contributing to the marginalization and dehumanization. Resistance and activism. Despite facing systemic oppression, black communities have a long history of resistance and activism. Movement for civil rights, black liberation, and social justice have challenged institutionalized racism and fought for equality, justice, and dignity for black people. Addressing the oppression of black people requires dismantling systemic racism, advocating for policy changes, promoting racial equality and justice, amplifying marginalized voices, and fostering solidarity and allyship across communities. It is a complex and ongoing struggle that requires collective actions and commitment to create a more just, equitable society for all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share your thoughts in the comment box below. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.